Dream it, do it. I'm Danielle Hobbs. And I'm making a movie. It is a film about a young lady who comes into contact with her unique gifts and talents and finds the bravery to use them in her life. Actually, it's a universal message about what it looks like when one comes into contact with their gifts and callings, accepts them, and rises up to the process of the metamorphosis of becoming a gift for the universe and God to use. Dream it, do it, Daniel. Girl. I'm Danielle Hobbs, and I just watched a riveting, most excellent show here, Miss Misty Monroe, unapologetically. And I just wanted to tell you, bow down first of all to a queen like you. How do you think about gifts and callings? Do you think that people actually have them? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. I definitely think that people have gifts and callings, and. I think sometimes that sometimes people ignore callings. Um, they may have the gift, but they ignore the activity behind the gift. Um, they don't want to do anything with it because when you walk into your gift or your calling, when you when it is revealed to you what your gift is, you're supposed to use it. And it takes a lot of bravery, it takes a lot of courage to use what you've been called to do. When you ignore your calling, it's probably because there's a process. Because mm -hmm. we know about gifts, we always like to receive a gift, but we very rarely want to go through the process of yeah. letting it unfold, yeah. as like my would say. And so, what was your process in doing Unapologetically Black? Uh, and My walking in that calling. Which is, it is, so I, when I was younger, I used to always do voices. Um, I played very intricately for hours. I could play with dolls, I could play, uh, I could be in the mirror, just, I would do voices and faces and voices and faces. And it wasn't until I got into high school that I had a teacher that, that said, uh, I'm gonna put you in speech competitions. I think you'd be great. Mm -hmm. And then I realized like, oh my gosh, my talking is a gift. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm going to take the leap and, and do my own solo show. It was very frightening. It's very cathartic. Oh, I, as you saw in the story, been through a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm a believer. I believe in God and I believe that it was um, His calling for me to tell this story. Fabulous, yes, yes. So I totally understand. And yeah. like a hashtag I've seen before, you choose what you do with your story. Yeah. Sometimes we can't always wait for someone to tell our story. And a lot of times when you have gifts and callings, you also are now open to get something through you. What do you think of when you think of someone saying you are a beneficial force for the universe? Oh, so that's such a deep statement. Um, you are a beneficial force for the universe. Oh, you just kind of have to breathe for that. I, I, I honestly believe that we all have a beneficial force for the universe. And we can either use our gifts and our talents for good or evil. You can choose. And I, and I believe that you can choose. And if you are walking in your anointing, your gifting, and your calling, I believe that you are a beneficial force to this universe. Well, thank you, Misty, and you are a beneficial force to this universe. And I'm glad to now know you and be a part of it with you. <laughs> and now we're at the San Manuel Pow Wow, yep. where the gifted celebrate the gifted. He said that they go ahead of the tribe and, and they grasp dance is the grass dancers that they dance and pray on the land and the grass will grow they pray in the dancing all the dancing is all their dancing is about prayer and healing mm -hmm. he said that's what it's always been they go ahead of the tribe and then the tribe does the grass dance, blesses the earth so that the grass will grow so that when they migrate, the buffalo will then 
eat the grass that they eat the buffalo. Okay. He said the women. That's awesome. The right. women have always done the healing dances. Okay. For their husbands, for their um, Ill, Ill healings, for people that their brothers, their cousins, their fathers that would be away at war. They pray for their husbands to come okay. home from war, okay. their dads, their uncles, okay. and for them if they are um, sick. So they would have a blanket. Every blanket you see has been prayed on. Oh. They dance on the blanket and okay. fill it with healing prayer, and then they would send the blanket to the hospital, and it is filled well. with prayer and healing. And that's what he was telling me. He was saying all of the dancing has always, and the drum is the heartbeat of the soul and right. of the earth. And he said, and part of the women that do the healing dances, mm -hmm. the reason why they wave a fan is because they're waving to the eagle because it is believed that the eagle is the only bird that can connect to God. He's right. like, but the American dollar made these powwows something where people are not using the dancing for the spiritual mm -hmm. empowerment that has always been mm -hmm. um, rooted in. Wow. I was 14, 14, 15. Wow. What does it feel like to see yourself up here? It feels like an art, piece of art. And it was oh only $5. Oh my goodness. Yeah, now it's like... <laughs> and you were half 12? No, it's 14, 15 years. Doing that in the And you said it feels like art. This dance this was to John Williams. So he would tell us, show us pictures of Alvin Ailey and Martha Graham and Julia Jameson. So that's why we just rolled with it. Because we were like, oh, well, I guess. We're not just dancers, we really are masterpieces. We are like Degas and Casos and Barishnikovs, and that's just the way that we were groomed to be, to understand ourselves to be. My name is Clifford Greeland. And what would you like to say about Danielle Hobbs? Well, Danielle is a very special talent, a God-given uh, gift. And Danielle came to me when she was, I believe, about 14 years old. And she had this energy about her that was, that was very magnetic, you know. She drew people to her and a natural, natural performer. One of those, uh, those artists that was, has been touched by the divine creator, you know. So I knew that she was going to go places and I knew that she was an exception. And matter of fact, I believe she ended up graduating high school at the age of something like 16. 16. Yes. Right. And then she ended up graduating from college, I think a year earlier yes. than expected. Yes. You know? Yes. So she was one of those kind of special overachievers. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad to see her still achieving and reaching for the stars. You know, I'm, I'm more proud of her, her inner beings that she's so self-aware, you know, that everything that happens in this creation, that we manifest it ourselves, you know, and that she's aware of that, and, uh, and that she's aware of other people around her, and that how connected we are, you know, that self-awareness and that the God within, that being, and, and that you can't touch. You know, that you can't touch. That, to me, is where talent lies. What do you think it means to be a beneficial force for the universe? A beneficial force for the universe is your calling. It's what we were put here for, to learn how to love. To learn how to love better and better until we reach that higher plane of where that's just Something on the other side, you know that that fireworks, that uh, that Star Spangled Banner, that uh, that self creation. That's where the energy of the divine lives. You know, it's holy. It's holy and sacred. Thank you so much. And it's us. Yes. yes. Thank you so much.